This week, I, 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 I cannot download this song. We'll have, to, we'll have to do it when we get there. Someone will have to find us a link for this because it's a thing. Literally. Um, I'll explain as we get there. Okay. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Mike on finding us. Are we trusting Mike to find things that we're going to put on the air? Well, it's a thing that's related to a thing. You'll see. You'll see. But right now, it I follows Mike and that worries me. <laughs> oh, Mike, my producer, he is um, he is a worrisome creature. Yes. Although he is responsible for my hippo pimpering. <laughs> the, are, are, is the hippo a pimp or are you a pimp of hippos? It's a pimpering of a hippo. So when I pimp slap you, I leave a hippo shaped mark and everybody knows. OK. Oh, OK. Well, let's uh, let's get started then, shall we? With that. No, that's not the. Derp, herp, derp in the derp, derp, perp. I'm bad at my job. God oh, damn I it. I shouldn't hold Wait, that sign up anymore. I wrote all kinds of other crap on it. It has like train times and some random 800 number. Each week, Catherine goes out in the world wide in her webs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings back here a little something we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And I guess this is the one we need to 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 um start with here. Because there really is, we're just diving right to fuck in. I, we've had the home invasion, well, I call it break-ins. They're not home invasion, they're break-ins. We've had the home break-in stories again and again and again. And they always seem to find some way to put a new spin on it. Oh my. Jason Vickery breaks into home Plays with hella toy helicopter. Masturbates. Oh, that first paragraph. OK, um, who wrote this? Who, who wrote? Who, where, would you, is there a credit on this one? Let me see if there's a byline. Oh, I'm about to get the Mac Beach Ball of Doom. I don't see a byline. No, who would admit to this? This is an Alan Smithy story. Yeah. If you're at home and hear a mysterious fap, fap, fap noise, it might be a helicopter outside, or it might be this guy. Go, you're not, it's not, no. Jason Lee Vickery, 23, broke into a home in St. Augustine, Florida. Florida! Wednesday and was about to masturbate when he got distracted by a green remote control helicopter. Vicker, uh, Vickery sought, sought out the toy's batteries and flew the helicopter for a while, uh, thus depriving the owner of the item and its battery life. At some point while inside the home, he ate a salad he happened to have with him. Then Vickery allegedly masturbated in the bathroom on the second floor, but stopped and went to the backyard because he heard voices coming out so from outside. The voices belonged to deputies who arrested him. She'll say he confiscated a bag of marijuana as well as drug paraphernalia. A pound of chewing tobacco, a towel, and a wig. This whole story is just a string of words. <laughs> it's like journalism mad lib. None <laughs> of them make any sense when put together. Salad, but towel, helicopter. They are sentences. Salad, towel, helicopter, masturbation. Like, what happened here? A pound of chewing. What the fuck? I can't. I can't go on. This. This that is, is the worst case of ADD <laughs> I've ever heard. Like you're getting ready to make the bald man cry, but first, is that what the kids are calling it these days? That's what Tyrion Lannister calls it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. That. Yeah, make make the bald man. Um, you know, and, and you get distracted by a toy helicopter to the point where you've got to hunt down batteries for it. 
Like you would think at the point that it doesn't have batteries, your boner would win out. Did he wash his hands first? Well, he hadn't gotten to masturbate yet by the time he played with the toy helicopter. <laughs> I just... And then, you know, all that playing... Why? He have the energy to masturbate, so he's got to... I mean, at least, you know, on his break and masturbate spree, he thought to pack a snack. Why? Is all... I... All of this could easily have been accomplished from the comfort of his own home. Here's a question. If he was high enough to do this. It's kind of a miracle. I guess it's not a question. It's kind of a miracle. He didn't he didn't confuse the salad with the weed with the chewing tobacco. Like you have various containers of different kinds of plants. It's kind of amazing. He didn't wind up eating like. A lettuce and pot and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then what we do? Speaking of which, a Mets game this week had to run on a short umpire staff because the home plate umpire suddenly ran off the field with a towel to his mouth. And everyone's like, oh my God, what happened to that guy? Did he get hit on the backswing in the mouth or something? No, he had swallowed his chewing tobacco and had to run off the field to hurl all over the clubhouse. And professionalism. <laughs> What I love about the look on this guy's face, which I will share with one and all big screen. He just looks like, yeah, so whatever yeah, that happened. Yeah, it was a thing happened. Whatever. You know, it's all good. I want to know how the person who wrote this story knew. Like, did he say, well, I broke in and was about to masturbate, but I got distracted by this helicopter. <laughs> how do we know that? He didn't break in to eat his salad and the helicopter just got him really turned on. If anything with spinning blades is turning you on. Therapy. OK, I've played a lot of Soul Calibur in my time, and I'm here to tell you, I am confident that there is someone out there in the universe who found Voldo hot. Yeah, yeah. Like, that guy was in head-to-toe fetish gear. That was for somebody. The next one we have tonight is kind of pathetic, honestly, compared to this guy. This guy was a strong lead-in, but we got this, this next one. <sighs> Scared burglar arrested after... Let me get, get you the fucking link. After calling police... They're mad at me for ruining that perfectly innocent gimp character from Soul Calibur. Scared burglar arrested after calling police about cat. A scaredy cat burglar was arrested after he became frightened when he heard a strange noise and rang police from under a bed. Marius Ionescu, am I saying that right? Ionescu. Ionescu, thank you. 31 mistook the family cat for another burglar in a house in Benesti, Romania, causing him to head for cover and wait for the authorities to come and rescue him. When police turned up, they did not discover anyone else in the house except for the burglar and promptly arrested him. Even if it's another burglar in the house. They're not going to rescue you. They're going to arrest both of you. Like, you're still, <laughs> you're still not the victim in this scenario. No. Generally, <laughs> when you're committing a crime. Dark Hawkeye. Best. One second. Dark Hawkeye had the best one. And uh, I'll have to use these because it's all I have around. Well, I guess he was. Not the only pussy there. Yeah! Sorry, that was just too much. Too much. Sorry. Please continue. Generally, when you're committing a crime, you want to avoid the fuzz, as they're called in the vernacular. You don't want to call them to your location where you are committing the crime and then stay there. That's I'm going to stay under the bed. Under the bed. OK. That's counterproductive. It's a burglar. Who is already... You're the bad guy! The bad guy is hiding under the bed! 
You, you, sir, are the bad guy. (laughs) (laughs) And I hope that cat peed on you. (laughs) Oh, God, just uh, for fuck's sake. I mean, if you're that afraid. Just go rob a different house. Uh, You had one job. All (sighs) right. The next one, oh, and this makes me sad because Anne Frank's already had to put up with shit from Justin Bieber. She doesn't need more crap. Why is everybody fucking with Anne Frank? I don't time? know. Like the poor girl's been dead for like 50 years and all of a sudden everybody's fucking with her. Leave her alone. She's been through enough. <sighs> Mom says Anne Frank diary is porn fights to pull it from school. Look, there's Nazi fetishists. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a whole other level. The Anne Frank diary is, quote, pornographic, according to one mother who has lodged a formal complaint complaint over the book used to educate her child. Uh, Mom, Gail Horlick, uh, has filed a formal complaint against her daughter's school district over its use of the Anne Frank diary. The mother highlights one part of the book in which Frank discusses her genitalia, and Horlick has said it is akin to pornography and is completely inappropriate for her child and her schoolmates. I think I know what the problem is here. If you have to go through life with a last name like Horlick... <laughs> You're going to see porn in everything. I think because you're going to live your whole life with teenagers following you around, saying your last name and giggling. Horlick. (laughs) So, yeah, I have a theory. That could be bunnies. Nice. Um, That certain people in the world are deathly afraid of their own crotch. Yes. That that seems to be the only explanation because to ignite if you're if you don't want your child to even acknowledge the existence of genitalia, which are part of your anatomy, your biology, you kind of have you can't just be like, they're not there. If I pretend they're not there, they'll go away. You can you have to acknowledge them. And I promise you, your teenager is not pretending they're not there. Yes. That's that's not how that's working out. I just need it, it's context, woman. It's the diary. How does it you? How is it she went through the whole book? And, the and only that's th- what she took out. of Yes, it. that's her takeaway. Not this girl's plight, not the tragedy of World War Two, what it did to the Jews and none of that. No, naughty bits. That's like reading Macbeth and going, wow, that's a really tragic story about a guy with a bad case of insomnia. Exactly. Just just not not exactly the headline. (sighs) Yeah, did you read Anne Frank about the Jews and about, you know, what they had to go through (laughs) in the what? Computer Ronin, maybe her vagina is haunted. That's never going to die. You have to get out of here. Your vagina has been found by the Nazi. (laughs) (laughs) You cannot escape your own genitalia. I mean, to be like, hey, yo, you read the diary of Anne Frank. What did you think about the Nazis and all that? It had a vagina. That's all you're taking away. It is true. And I know we're doing this a little bit early, but we have now learned no matter how hard you try, you can't escape your own genitalia. You can't. Speaking of, we have two genitalias back to back, and this one, this is the well, one. We can escape other people's genitalia, can't we? <laughs> I guess not. Unfortunately, this song is on iTunes. I don't have an iTunes account, so I can't get it. But I'm pretty sure just the description alone is going to. Do you know where the here's a little side fun fact. Do you know why the Guinness Book of World Records started? I feel like I used to, but I don't anymore to settle bar bets. 
Yes. And since then, they have put all sorts of ridiculous shit in the Guinness Book of World Records. Like for one I saw was uh, how many walnuts can you break with your ass in a row? And I saw a video of this and it was like. They're just forcefully slamming their asses down on walnuts. It's it's like. <laughs> so there this this category <laughs> the greatest phrase in the English language. Slamming their ass down on walnuts. Like forget Shakespeare. Fuck that guy. Forcibly slamming their asses down on walnuts. <laughs> That's the reason the English language was invented. You're welcome. OK, this this category, however, is kind of obvious. But what the guy does with it is. Oh, for fuck's sake, Jonah Falcon. And I got to say, he already has an amazing name to start with. That's like a superhero name. Yeah, it's a comic book name. Yeah. Jonah Falcon, man with largest penis, releases song about his penis. It's too big. Okay. The man famous for his 13.5 inch record setting penis released a song. It's bound to impress even the most hardened of pop. Who wrote this? Andy Campbell. Fuck you, Andy Campbell. Let me get this straight. This is a man named Jonah Falcon. Mm hmm. Who has a 13 and a half inch penis. Yes. There's no way this is a real human. <laughs> This Guinness. is like like some last action hero shit where some comic book character that some 13 year old created accidentally hopped out of the page like in that aha video. <laughs> Only instead of a pipe wrench, it's a penis. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's also kind of a pipe wrench, apparently. It's Too Big, released on iTunes and CD Baby on April 16th, features Falcon's penetrating voice. Sh fuck you! This guy, the, the puns, singing about his own member, which was again thrown into the limelight after Huffington Post Weird News covered Falcon getting frisked by the TSA. Lyrics like these, it's clear to see that Falcon and his co-pop singer Adam Barta are looking to go big. Sh stop, I'm gonna, I wanna murder this man, the guy who wrote this. I heard it from all the guys and every single freaking girl. They want to try and take a ride on the biggest in the world, but in order to ride the beast, it must be unfurled. Too damn big. It's just too damn big. Your penis too damn big. Yeah, it's too damn big. That's beautiful. It's poetry, That's, man. I mean, it's not every day you read something that really just like speaks to the human soul, you know? I'm a little overclipped. <laughs> as I understand anatomy, I, I, I kind of get where this guy is coming from a little bit. I, as I understand anatomy, there is only about 10 inches you can go, depending, give or take, before you're hitting unpleasant things in your partner with the <clears throat> penis. I, th I think that's about as far as you can go. You know, if, you're, if you're going an extra three and a half inches, it's not a fun time anymore. So, yeah, it's, I can understand his plight. However, oh, someone says, I think it's even less than that. Yeah, I can understand his plight. But this is not I, I also understand people writing a songs to express their pain and to, to as therapeutic, cathartic work to get out into the world. But now, my friend, not only are you know, you're going to be known for having the biggest dick. OK, biggest dickest that had to happen. Handsome James Hick, for not having the biggest dick in the world. You sang about it. Yeah. I, OK, Crusader, my vagina is eight miles wide. They need to have they need to get together. Yes. Everybody. That's that's like the fourth time that jokes hit the channel, actually. Yeah, probably. I, I like who was it? I, I don't know who wrote it. Someone said, well, we know who's cock of the walk. I love the picture there. Him with the tape measure. Yeah. 
Download before it pops the charts. <sighs> okay, I think the big story, the big thing about this story is Andy Campbell must die. A clear homage to the Pep Shop Boys and anything that. Okay. The song can speak for itself. Falcon fans will be excited to know that it's too big. A clear homage to the Pet Shop Boys and anything that can't be measured by a standard ruler won't be going flaccid anytime soon. Andy Campbell must die. Falcon didn't comment on the girthy tune. His new publicist wants to embargo the package, even though it was already released. Hey, you know what? He's got a big dick. He's got a big dick. Did you know he's got a big dick? Hey, guess what? He's got a big dick. It's a big dick. Did you know he had a big... Fuck you, Andy Campbell. It does take a certain level of talent to work a terrible... A terrible phallic pun into every single sentence of... It does. That had to take some doing. Like, he had to watch so many Adam Sandler movies. Andy Campbell will never be the same. <sighs> All right. I don't I don't care. He's an asshole. I don't like him. Um, all right. The next one we're getting, it's kind of we're going up and down. There are peaks and valleys. We're getting back to something a little more normal for us, which isn't saying much. I just burped there. I'm sorry. This this really isn't saying much, um, but. So if it's peaks and valleys, does that mean now that we did the penis peak story, we're going to have a vagina valley story? No, but oh. it's, it's I just. I thought it was a metaphor. What's a metaphor? Never mind. It's a joke. Never mind. No, I'm reading the headline. Oh. Hialeah Cop. My girlfriend's <gasps> pimp set me up. A Hialeah police sergeant may have found love in a hopeless place. What is with the writing this week? Miami Herald Joey Fletchus. Fuck you! None of you are Jon Stewart. Stop it. How do you say that name? I'm going to fuck up trying to say it. Munez. Munez? Tomas Munoz. Munoz. Okay. Tomas Munoz, a 15 year veteran of the department, has been suspended with pay after being arrested Saturday and charged with cocaine possession and carrying drug paraphernalia. He says he's innocent and he was set up by his girlfriend's pimp. I met a girl. She happens to have a pimp and we fell in love. Munya said, and he and she he doesn't let her be free. This came up because he set up this came about because he set up the whole thing up. Can we just can we just take a moment and reflect on the sentence? I met a girl. She happens to have a pimp. <laughs> And we fell in love. <laughs> You'll just stop for a minute and reflect on the fact that that is a quote from a police officer in a real news story. <laughs> it she, does sound like a country song guy with a username I'm not going to say out loud. It does sound like a country it's, song. It's like saying, you know, she happens to be from Sweden or... Yeah. or she happens to be, you know, a personal trainer or something. She happens to have a pimp. Just happens like, like to be really into knitting. Yeah. She happens to have a lot of cats. She <laughs> happens to have a pimp. I mean, who among us can say we've never fallen in love with a girl who happened to have a pimp? Anyway, uh, uh, they later at night, Miami police found him in with a crack pipe and drugs in a Miami motel room where he was with the woman. Uh, his police searched and found crack rocks, rocks on a nightstand and a crack pipe under the mattress. And he, uh, Munoz appeared to be consoling his girlfriend. It's OK, he said. Things happen for a reason. Yes, you were smoking crack. It's why it happened. With your girlfriend who happens to have, have a pimp. You're 
this guy is like he's this As you know <laughs> the movie pretty woman the movie pretty woman was not originally a romantic comedy it was originally written as a horrible cautionary tale and the julia roberts character was supposed to be like a raging drug addict and it was supposed to be really dark. And like at the end, Richard Gere doesn't like pull up and tell her he loves her. He like throws an envelope with $3,000 down in the street. And like she ends up going crazy and banging on his windows as he drives away. I kind of want to see that movie more. Which is all to say that I feel like this is more how the real version of Pretty Woman would have played out. Yeah. Not to say that like. I mean. If, that's not to say that a hooker can't be lovable. I'm sure there are many, many hookers who are wonderful human beings who just are in a bad situation and who are very yeah. capable of loving and being loved. That said, if you're a cop, that may not be where you source your dates. No. It's a conflict of interest. Yeah. But hey, at least he doesn't have to go far to, to, to do his job. Short commute. And and here's the thing. If you have a girlfriend who happens to have a pimp and you're a cop, why the fuck isn't that pimp in jail? You've got connections. You're not doing your job as a boyfriend. Fucker ought to be behind bars. Girlfriend's free. Everybody's problems are solved. Yeah, actually. What happened there, buddy? <laughs> I almost said you should go into law enforcement, but then that just scared me. Okay. They should make me like, should make me like a Judge Dredd type. The last story this week is... Uh, I am the law. The guy involved in this last story is did hurt himself. It wasn't life-threatening, but he did hurt himself. But only himself. And because of what happened... I I cannot help but cover the story because this is so mind shatteringly common sense defying. This is, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you know about the Plato's shadows on the wall. The cave. The cave. Allegory. Yeah, right. Um, this is the perfect hey y'all watch this story. The, 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 I'm going I'm going all college on you, baby. So, you know. Um, would be squirrel killer injured after taping cartridge to BB gun and by cartridge, oh, by cartridge, we mean bullet. Yeah. Man who tried to shoot a squirrel for dinner by taping a 40 caliber cartridge to a BB gun. And that's not very small. That's not like a 22. That's a good sized bullet. Um, was hospitalized with shrapnel wounds after the cartridge exploded. Sword complaint was filed against William Daniel Lloyd for discharging a firearm in public and possession of ammunition by a convicted felon. Um, Lloyd had taped the. Go ahead. I, I'm a bad person. Mm hmm. Because all I can think is, you'll shoot your eye out, you'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> Damn, I shot my eye out. <laughs> That's all I can think. Um, Lloyd fired the BB gun, causing the BB to start strike the cartridge's primer. The cartridge discharged and fragmented, striking Lloyd in the upper arm and lower leg. He was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. <sighs> Lloyd told police he was trying to shoot a squirrel with a Pump Master 760 BB gun. His girlfriend told police that Lloyd told her he was trying to shoot a squirrel for dinner. There's not even a lot of meat on a squirrel. Go for a fucking raccoon. How much meat is there on a squirrel? Okay. Go for a bigger target. That's going to make a more satisfying meal. Also, they probably have rabies. I don't know if you remember there was a Snopes story. Uh, it was it was still, it was an urban legend about the guys who uh, replaced the fuse in their truck with a bullet the jet engine. 
No, not a jet engine. There's a fuse that was out and they, they didn't have a fuse to fit it. So they replaced it with a bullet. And the bullet got too hot and it went off and shot him in the leg. But it wasn't true. OK. And the reason I, I saw that story, I thought it wasn't true. is was like, well, obviously, that's a stupid thing to do. It's Never a bullet. The stupidity of humans. It really fucking happened. Sort of, but. It's a f- Never, ever underestimate the stupidity of humans. Ever. <sighs> I. But even like if, if what you say is true, I, I don't know anything about guns. And that's a very large bullet. It's not a huge one. If this had worked. You'd obliterate that squirrel. Yeah, it's probably it's a it's a think about a forty five or nine. Like you have nothing for dinner except a fluffy tail, because you're gonna blow the that fucking squirrel to kingdom come. Like there's gonna be no squirrel frog says. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Rainier says a forty cal would blow a squirrel in half. Yeah, like. It's not going to yield you dinner. Apparently, it's bigger than a forty-five. I, I wasn't unaware of this. I'm not a I'm not a gun guy. I know basics. Just hunt them with a bow and arrow, like Katniss Everdeen. Not quite. Uh, no, it's not. Nat- oh, well, guys, get your shit straight. It's it doesn't a- matter. It's too big a bullet to shoot a squirrel yes. and have dinner, right? Yes. Like I think we can agree on that. I think we can also agree that asking my channel anything is a bad idea. Because you will and that you shouldn't tape any kind of real bullet to a BB gun. <laughs> it's an explosive touch to a hunk of metal. That Not even BB guns are like plastic now. Nothing's metal anymore. I was talking the bullet, but yeah, that's even worse. BB guns aren't metal anymore. Nothing. Transformers are plastic now. Like. Man, I know they were so much better. But there was no way this was going to end well. I guess the first thing we've learned is. And if he had real bullets, why didn't he have a real gun? This is this is kind of a, you know. uh, A a ratio, a a performance to outcome ratio, you know, the investment you're putting in, you're not quite going to get out of it what you put into it. Mm -mm. So I guess we learned that. You, you've got to do the math properly. You have to ask yourself, is what's going to happen to me worth shooting a squirrel for dinner? <laughs> the answer is no. No. You, you really got to do a cost benefit analysis. I swear to God, I wonder if. I, if if I God. If only I, I I just want to know, did he actually have to tell someone to hold his beer? Did he? I, I just I got to know because that no, he probably just strapped the beer to the other side of the BB gun. <laughs> <laughs> or oh. because he's enterprising, he already had a beer helmet on. We've learned that some people get turned on. Buy anything, no matter how potentially. You know what? That helicopter wanted it. That helicopter was asking for it. It was just laying there. It's blades all akimbo. Oh, given that come hither stare. I've got everybody knows helicopters are whores. You're making me do this. We're, We're going a little bit into overtime, but I've got to show you. This this is just I, I, I'll have no other occasion where this will be relevant in any way, shape or form. Um, this this happened to Gary Kasparov, who was a former chess champion who got into Russian politics and was giving a campaign speech. When this happened. <laughs> I'll give you the link so you can see. Um, this this is Gary Kasparov. He's uh, and suddenly, <laughs> do I even have to? I. <laughs> Oh, 
And in the words of a great man, that's all I have to say about that. Wow. We learned this week that if you don't have a strong, an iron will or constitution, you probably shouldn't get into crime. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be spooked by the dark or cooties or the monster in the closet. Fluffy. Yeah. Crime is not for you. If you're going to call the police to ask them to protect you while you commit your crime. Crime is not for you unless you're really wealthy and run a bank. Yeah, then. Yeah. Then you're all good. What's the saying? If I wanted to steal, I, I want to steal a thousand dollars. I went and got a gun. I wanted to steal a million dollars. I went and got a bachelor's degree. Um, we learned that some pe to some people, no matter what it is, any work of fiction or media or, or nonfiction or history, anything, it all comes down to the inclusion or non-inclusion of genitals. That's all they're going to take away from it. Did it have a genital? Yes or no. And the irony of it is to me that, I mean, this woman's religious persuasion was not mentioned, but these people are almost always Christian. And the Bible is one of the dirtiest fucking books. Song of Samson. Song of fucking Samson. Violent. It is porny. There's slavery. There's Solomon. Rape. Sorry, not Samson. Solomon. Sorry, it's late. It makes Game of Thrones look like Thomas the Tank Engine, the Bible. Yeah, Thomas the. <laughs> wow, that just changed Game of Thrones for me. How do you put boobs on a train? Anyway, uh, cow catcher. <laughs> um, I mean that would catch a cow, I suppose. <laughs> But then it's kind of like an infinite milk feedback loop. <laughs> and I, I guess lastly, what we learned is um, the grass is always greener, or or should I say the dick is always longer on the other side. Um, I don't think he's going to make it to the viral status of thrift shop. No, no. And that 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 was even more clever. And no, no, this even though like the third line of thrift shop is like, what up? I got a big cock. <sighs> Andy Campbell. Yeah, we learned Andy Campbell must die. Yeah. Fuck you, Andy Campbell of the Huffington Post. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You are a bad man. You're bad and you should feel bad. You go stand in the corner. You think about what you did. Andy he can't. Campbell. All he can think about his dicks. 